Um, so September is PCE. The overall number came in hotter month over month, so up 0.4% from August and as expected 3.4 percent higher from a year ago Maria looking at the core this is the Fed's favorite inflation um, uh, a gauge it, it captures a wide range of, of inflation across products at the core level in line 0.3 percent and also in line uh, year over year 3.7 percent it was in August that we finally broke four of course 3.7 percent uh, is a far away from two, but nonetheless, so as expected, core PCE up 3.7% on an annualized basis. Quickly, uh, consumer spending rising stronger than expected 0.7%. However, consumer income up a weaker 0.3% for the month from August. Maria? Lauren, I'm not seeing much movement in markets, but I think this personal consum uh, consumption number is real interesting. Okay, you're telling me that it was up seven tenths of a percent. The estimate was up five tenths of a percent. So once again, we see that consumer spending and really keeping this uh, keep, keeping this economy afloat. Yeah, and that's just what we saw when we got that spectacular GDP. Uh, P report yesterday that the consumer continues to spend money. The question is why? If you have pandemic savings, you're out of them. You're putting a lot of your purchases on your credit card and servicing that debt, paying off that balance is obviously costing you more money as the Fed continues to raise interest rates. I don't know what it takes to tell the consumer to stop spending. Maybe we yeah. accept a little bit here or there. And as we hear from corporate America, everyone from Chipotle to, you know, Coca-Cola, we are accepting the price increases that our big companies, our popular brands are putting forth. Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, joining us right now to react to all of this is former Council of Economic Advisors Chairman and Hoover Institution Distinguished Visiting Fellow Kevin Hassett uh, back with us. Former CKE Restaurants CEO and Heritage Foundation Senior Fellow Andy Puzder. Former FDIC Vice Chairman and former Kansas City Federal Reserve President Thomas Honig. And also with me this morning, Scott Wren, John Lonsky. Great to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thomas Honig, let me kick this off with you. Your assessment of the PCE report this morning and <laughs> consumer spending and income. Well, I think, first of all, the, the GDP number was higher than people expected, and that's very good news. The PCE came in about where most people thought it would. It, it, didn't vary much from the CPI in terms of a little change month over month. So that's uh, more news. I think uh, in that environment, the, the Fed is uh, obviously being more careful. I don't think they're going to move with that data. So they won't be moving uh, this month. They'll wait later. Uh, and they're being cautious. They are uh, most careful about not overdoing it. And that's what's causing them to hold back. And I think we'll have them hold back further. So I think these data are consistent with what we might have expected um, uh, what we did expect, I should say, going forward, and I think the Fed will hold their powder dry for a while uh, and hoping that the economy slows mildly as the effects of the spending, the government spending for infrastructure, chips, and the uh, reduced inflation program uh, uh, has, has its longer-term effects and slows down. So they're hoping yeah. for this soft landing, and that's why I think they're going to hold off. Well, you also have the student loan repayments going to be resuming. We'll see if that plays into anything in terms of pressure on consumers to keep up this spending. Kevin Hassett, how do you see it? Well, you know, I, I disagree with Tom a little bit. The fact is that, you know, you don't really call it a soft landing when the GDP number is coming in close to five. And the consumer isn't really spending pandemic savings right now. I think that what's happening is that if you look at, like, the Atlanta Fed wage tracker, the real wages are probably growing almost 3 percent right now with wage growth above uh, price growth. And that actually makes people optimistic and lets them go out and spend. And that's what we're seeing in the PCE number that you saw today. And so I think with a really strong consumer, you know, GDP growth that's about the same level as the federal funds rate, the idea that inflation is going to go down from here, I think, is preposterous. And so I think the Fed's going to have to tighten again. And finally, uh, just to finish up, that when wages are growing faster than prices, that's really bad news for profits. And in your last segment, you talked about how analysts are going to have to lower their profit targets. And I 100 percent agree with that. So, Kevin, then do you think then in the first half of next year we could have economic issues? 
Oh, sure. Well, but but again, what's going on? Don't forget is that the the Taylor rule for like what the interest rate should be if you really want to get to two percent is somewhere between six and seven percent for the federal funds rate. We're way below that, so economic activity is going to stay pretty hot until the Fed either tightens a lot or maybe equities collapse because of earnings. But right now, we're going to be riding the momentum you see right now until the Fed does more or you know equity markets head south in a, in a way that really causes people to slow down. But but we could definitely ride out this positive momentum into next year. If you look at federal funds futures, they're expecting a rate cut around May. I think that that's probably about the earliest you could expect to see a recession. Andy Puzder, reaction to all of this? Yeah, I think the real question is whether or not the level of consumer spending, uh, we're, whether we're going to be able, able to maintain it so that we can have the kind of uh, reaction that Kevin's talking about. I think we, we, we've seen savings are depleted. Uh, we've seen credit cards charged up. We're seeing the uh, the hardship withdrawals on 401ks way up. So you're really seeing people have spent the money that they've had in reserve. The question is whether or not we're going to see enough of an increase in wages to maintain the kind of growth we've seen over the past quarter and over the past month. And I, I'm not sure that that wage growth is going to be sufficient to maintain this. So I think we we may be heading towards more economic trouble than might be expected. Well, we'll see, because with all of these strikes going on and these settlements happening, maybe wages take a cue from that. John Lonsky, jump in here. Your thoughts? That would not be good if we find out that wages move <laughs> higher, you know, in conjunction uh, with these recent uh, labor agreements. I think we have uh, UAW came forth with an agreement with Ford calling for a, a 5 percent average annual increase over the next five years. And that's well above the recent year-to-year uh, -year increase by average hourly earnings, which was just above 4 uh, you know, that being said, I want to point out one thing about this report, and that is, yeah, we had a seven-tenths of a percent monthly increase by consumer spending, but that monthly increase by consumer spending was far above the accompanying three-tenths of a percent increase by disposable personal income or after-tax personal income. Put simply, it would be impossible uh, to have consumer spending uh, continuously and definitely outrun the growth of after-tax income. So I think we, we have signs of an unsustainable imbalance here that unless wage growth picks up and uh, unless income growth picks up consumer spending has to slow and that's what the market's baking on that's what the credit market thinks is going to happen yeah I and mean, we had Jerry Storch on the other day former CEO of Toys R Us and he said we're he's expecting one of the worst holiday spending seasons on record given all of these pressures Scott from a stock market perspective uh, you know, there's that uh, rich feeling because markets are up year to date. So that's what Alan Greenspan used to look at all the time, right? When you've got a stock market doing well, uh, consumers feel richer and they spend possibly beyond their means. What does this all mean for the markets? Well, you know, I think I think Andy hit the nail on the head. I mean, we know that credit card balances are over a trillion dollars. And if you look at some of the Fed data, Maria, it, uh, the, the bottom 80 percent of the income scale have less cash on hand now than they did before the pandemic. So it's really the spending ability uh, is really going to tighten up here. And so I think what that means for the market, as I, as I mentioned in our last block, um, you know, earnings estimates are too high. Uh, we think there's plenty of headwinds out there when, when basically service spending and the consumer uh, have been driving this. I think the thing that's kept the market, uh, uh, really kept the market and the economy afloat is all this deficit fiscal spending on infrastructure. We've got a lot of people out there, roads, airports, uh, EV plants, uh, semiconductor fabrication plants. Those are all high-paying jobs. Americans with money in their pocket are going to go out and spend it. Uh, but there's going to be a lot more push, or a lot less push, I'm sorry, for personal spending as we enter the new year. Well, it's a good point. And Thomas, I'd love you to weigh in on that, because for the last couple of years, it's been the Federal Reserve uh, really, the only game in town trying to reverse inflation, they are up against a tsunami of spending. Six trillion dollars in, in borrowing and spending just in the last two years. 
when you look at this, are you looking at the wealth effect like Alan Greenspan used to look at? Are you looking at earnings estimates, uh, as Scott says, perhaps way too high? How do you see things? I, I think it's down the road. I, I, I think, in one sense, Kevin's right. Uh, as you, we've been kind of rolling with uh, this very high spending that you talked about. I mean, this infrastructure and this has been carrying us forward. That's coming to an end. The, the, the consumer is, in fact, um, leveraging themselves more. That's going to come to an end. Uh, I do think uh, inflation will remain an issue because wages are there and the Fed is not uh, responding. They're holding. They're being very cautious. They want this soft landing, and therefore they're going to err on the side of delay, and that's going to push things farther out, but I think it makes it even more difficult. And remember, the other part of it is I think interest rates have to go up regardless because uh, you're, you're, uh, the, the government is dumping tremendous amounts of new debt every week and month into the market. That pushes their price down and pushes interest rates up. That's going to slow investment even more. As you've already said, we've had a third quarter of investment wasn't that strong. So I think we have a slowdown ahead, but I think the Fed is in a position of trying to manage the landing, and they're going to err on the side of ease until it uh, confronts them with much higher uh, interest rates, but also in the long run, I mean, uh, and also, but importantly, the fact that uh, they're going to have uh, inflation uh, rising uh, in, the, in the future if they do not move sooner uh, than they are right now.